What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computer parts. Woo! All over the internet today on the program. A little bit of quick tech. It's Amazon Prime and whatever and stuff. And uh, D Cool sent over some things for me to have a look at. And uh, I've been using them for my Ryzen testing. I actually used the 240 Castle here, the EX, which is the non RGB fan variant. Uh, to do most of my Ryzen 3700X testing with the, you know, the high-end, wicked cooler stuff. But they didn't get the 360 mil to me until just a couple days ago. So, I've uh, been, uh, I swapped my system actually over, my, my whole production system. That's what's going on. Wait, you can't see. There we go. That's what's all going on here. And uh, that's the uh, Ryzen 3700X on the Aorus Wi-Fi Pro. And, uh, you know, really nice little orange thing. It's hard to tell with... Well, you know, me doing stuff, things, and whatever there. But I swapped the 240 over to the 360, and I uh, wanted to show uh, well, how good these coolers are. I actually used the Castle quite a bit, the uh, for original version, which was the RGB version. And uh, they've since updated them. Here's the 240 right here. Uh, to include their leak-proof bladder. So there's a little condom in the here, a bladder. Sorry, it's called a bladder. A little condom bladder in here that uh, basically expands and contracts. It's like a little rubber doohickey in here. That way, when the liquid gets you know hot, it doesn't pressurize the system so much that stuff might come out of here. Because there was this whole thing with the Captain, you know, which was is that's the one with the little tube coming out of the top of it, uh, where I guess there were some leaking issues with that. Kind of gave it a bad rap. It's a really good cooler, actually. I have one, and uh, you know what? They were like, "We're going to take care of this. We're going to implement this new uh, patented system where there is uh, something that can expand and contract with the pressure of the, uh, you know, as the fluid changes temperature, and uh, then you know it just exhausts a little bit of air from inside that." bladder out you know it squeezes and then when the you know uh, stuff gets cool it contracts back and uh, makes for a leak proof system so this is a really good cooler and it's actually not expensive at all there is rgb in this infinity mirror in here and you can even check this out take this off and replace this little doohickey and uh, that has like the gamer storm uh, emblem on it that comes with another one of these it's just a mirror as you see in there's a b-roll where I've got it in my system, just swapped it out for fun. Uh, and I suppose you could put a sticker or something on that mirrored one, something like, you know, to customize it for yourself, uh, you know, or, or find some, I don't know, you could do something different with this. It's, it's cool, cool little customization, you know? And then nice rated tubing that uh, comes out with uh, into the uh, rad and it's nice, uh, you know, radiator with uh, some black fans, some uh, um, TF, 120s fans they're pressure fans they've got the little uh spoilers on the fins which is fun and uh yeah so really good coolers i used the original castle it was actually a 280 version uh for like my test bench for a good six or eight months back when uh you know uh like, like about a year ago when that came out and they since updated it and i don't think it was available in the u.s uh, for the first year life cycle. So they updated it and for some reason now they can sell it. You know, there's the whole patent issue with Asetech stuff or whatever. Well, they're doing it now. They figured it out a way to make it happen and they're a really good cooler. So worthwhile checking out. So you want to see some performance data. Well, I initially had the 240 and then we switched over to the 360. We can see a variance between both, but I've got my Ryzen system here and it's uh, overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, all core, 1.35 volts, which is what keeps it stable with some load line calibration set pretty high in there. Uh, I don't, I'm an all core overclock kind of guy, I always will be, and it's nice that this cooler, as we'll see, completely facilitates an overclock like that. So here's their whole range of stuff right here, you can see, and uh, we'll look at prices and stuff, but we'll switch over to... So if we check out some performance data, here's the 240. And this is after 16 minutes, 16 minutes, count them, uh, of me running the IDA64 stress test with the stress to cache FPU and CPU. And we see here that it was uh, getting pretty toasty, 70 degrees, but had an average of 71 degrees. It never broke uh, 75, which is where I find, at least with this motherboard, Ryzen likes to shut off. So that's good. So the 240, with a push-pull because my case has RGB fans in the front, which I did not put as part of the PWM. So 
some people argue that that's not a good thing to do. You should actually have both the same kind of fans on either side of the uh, push pull. I have some RGB Enermax fans that come with my case on the front and the ones that come with the cooler on the back and they're hooked up into the CPU header and they're running with a pretty like aggressive fan curve, but I'll show you some noise performance and I'll show you why I don't mind that. Uh, you know, we can't hear it right now. It's no problem. So we'll check over there. We see the 71 degrees. Well, what's the improvement if we switch over to the 360? Well, here it is. And uh, we see here, we, our average goes down about four degrees and we were even running at 60, almost 60 degrees there, uh, you know, during that part of the test. So some real, like a decent temperature change just for upping the rat a little bit. So uh, it's, it's worth it to get the 360 if you can fit it in your case, because there is a little bit of extra cooling potential here. But this isn't a 9900K. This isn't some high-end crate. Like the power consumption on Ryzen doesn't require the most high end of coolers. But if you're like me and you want to do all core overclocks and you want to try and go as high as you can, I'm definitely going to try and go a little further with this near the end of the video. See if I can't make it so that this, you know, uh, well, we were running uh, 4.35 before. Maybe we can run 4.4 with this in a push pull configuration. In the case, I don't know, I was doing it on an open test bench before with the 240. Uh, but just with two fans, actually. So interesting stuff. So the, they have RGB versions of these castles, version two, but I have the EX version, which doesn't have RGB on the fans. So it's up to you whether or not you want RGB on the fans or not. The pumps seem to be all the same, though. So switch over to how, what they are on Amazon. The 240 is just $109.99. Actually, I think that's a little cheaper than it was a few days ago. Amazon Prime Days might be, uh, you know, going in there. And I'll put links in the description, uh, you know, for both of these coolers. But it's a pretty decent price for a high-end, you know, pump, high-end RGB. Like, this is their higher end, like, above the Captain series. And then the uh, 360 is just 10 bucks more, $129.99. That's a really good uh, price for, a, like, all of the Ace Tech stuff's much higher above that. So... That's a pretty damn good price. Now there's no crazy RGB on the uh, the, the fans. The, you know that's gonna be coming later or whatever. But it's it's pretty good, pretty good situation. So I'm at 4.3 gigahertz, 1.35 volts here, just above that. I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this for a second and see if in this configuration I can't hold the 4.4 and run the Ida 64 stress test. I think that would be pretty cool. Give me a second. <laughs> All right, so I've got some interesting results here. I got the thing running full tilt right now, but uh, 4.4 gigahertz. And I mean, I don't have here, I don't have a screen recording of this, but uh, we're up near 71, getting pretty high there, but uh, running Cinebench, 4.4 gigahertz. And the push pulls at max. That's not the craziest deal, but uh, yeah, 2240, like that's, you know, pretty high up there. I mean, I can, is that extra 100 megahertz warranted? No. Is it worth it? No. Can you do it with the deep cool castle? I guess you can, which is pretty cool. I'm, I think I got a pretty good 3700X chip because I haven't seen very many people able to do 4.4 at all, but no one's willing to go to 1.46 volts, especially when you can get 4.3 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. So a whole extra 0.1 millivolts or volts or whatever. Anyways, it's it's not worth it. But uh, let's let's see. Give me a second here. I'll see if I can get Ida 64 to run right now with this and see what kind of temperatures we get. We're up at 70 degrees. This is way too hot. But I mean, the castle is taming it at 4.4 gigahertz. Normally I'd screen capture, but I don't have it set up to do that because I'm running my main system on this. So, uh, wow. In this, I had a 64 FPU stress test is actually running at 4.4 gigahertz. So this is a pretty BA cooler, but it still stands that you shouldn't be overclocking Ryzen. And there is a hard limit at like 4.3 gigahertz. You have to do way too much to go beyond that. But if you want to push to the limits, this thing's pretty awesome. 
Uh, like I kind of saw that with the 240, it was able to do stuff like this on my chip, but not not in the case, you know, with restricted airflow of a case and stuff like that. This is this is doing pretty good. It's, it's still running the. That's crazy. It's still running the, the stress test. So I'm at Watch TV Joe Instagram and Twitter. I will leave an affiliate link for this here product in the description. Uh, I seen plenty of evidence that you don't need a cooler quite like this to run Ryzen to its potential. It's not a 9900K, but if you do have a 9900K, this thing's doing pretty damn awesomely uh, as far as performance and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I don't have, like I, I could run it against the uh, Kraken X72 or whatever, but I'm not gonna rip that system apart and switch this anyways. When it all comes down to it, oh, and we finally blanked out. <laughs> It was able to run at 4.4 gigahertz and run this stress test for a little bit. <laughs> so I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. This will do 4.3 gigahertz all core on Ryzen, this wonderful castle. Thanks for uh, you know, Dequel sending it over. Pretty awesome uh, cooler. I guess it's about time I put things back to proper on this thing, but uh, it's running full tilt even right now, you know? It's not loud. The fans on it, like the some of the Enermax fan, like the Threadripper, the TR4 Enermax fans, like the high pressure ones, were so loud. This I could run in it like that, no problem. It's, it's not a big deal. So Castle, there's two, there's two of them in the description. Go check them out. Thanks to Deep Cool for sending them over. I don't know, they're good coolers. Go have a good day. Thanks very much. Bye.